Are you looking to get that edge in the office? Are you competing for that new job? Do you want to become a stronger leader? Are you motivated to be a better speaker? Explore with us as we discover. This is Toastmasters. Thank you very much for tuning in today. And we're going to be listening to Lee Moat provide a speech about some of the things he's experienced in his life. And evaluating that speech will be Scott Green, who's also currently our club president. So as you listen to Lee's speech in this next clip, you'll get a sense for the experiences that he's gone through, why he decided to join Toastmasters, and how he's planning to have it impact his future. Scott will also share some great reasons about why Toastmasters is helpful to people from all walks of life. And without further ado, here's the video. Hello? Yes, this is Lee Mowat. Who? The Guinness World Record people? <laughs> yes, I know I have a video on YouTube. Are you kidding me? I am? Do you mean to tell me I am the oldest person on the entire international YouTube site able to execute a round off back handspring and showing that in video? Do you mean I am a record holder? Uh, pardon me, can I call you back? I'm about to deliver a speech right now. <laughs> yes, I'll call, you, I'll call you back later. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. <laughs> wow, the Guinness people. Wow. My name is Lee Mawad. I recently retired from a 30-year software engineering and manager career. That career has led me on some incredible journeys where I've been able to achieve a lot of recognition at the cost of my stress levels, my relationships, and my connections. But a year ago, I pointed my life in a direction that has been building up inside of me for over 10 years. Over 10 years, this transition to the phase of life that I'm now in started on October 13th, 2004. On that day, I left work for home but I never made it. I did not know when I left work that I would not see my home for another month. I met with a very serious accident that evening. When I awoke from my coma, I saw my wife staring at me in the way that she always does. In talking to the doctors and to her, I understood that my motorcycle was hit by a 17-year-old driver who had the sun in his eyes. I had suffered head, lung, and other internal injuries, but worst of all, my right foot and shin was crushed between an 800-pound motorcycle and a two-ton Buick. The doctor indicated that my wife forced him to, sh to save that leg. His professional judgment was amputation. But nonetheless, although being forced, he was proud of his reconstructive work. He did the best he could to find all the pieces and parts that were supposed to be there. I still needed significant skin grafts to replace the skin that had gone AWOL in this ordeal. I recall watching television that evening after everyone had left my hospital room and seeing a commercial on television of people strolling along the beach. It was then that the doctor's words started to sink into me. I would not walk again. I started crying unbelievably. What would I be if I'm not able to walk? Wasn't walking a part of who I am? Isn't walking a part of who we all are, at least most of us? I now carry a permanent wound from this event where my heel used to be. It is permanent because the skin grafts in this area did not take. The wound requires weekly, sometimes daily care, but that's a normal part of my day. This wound constantly reminds me that we don't always have a choice of the pain that we feel in our life, but we always have the choice of how much suffering that pain causes us. I spent four months in recovery reflecting on many, many things. 
But before telling you the effects that this accident has had on me, I'd like to give you a few other items that provide background and context for my story. I am a passionate motorcyclist. I've ridden across this great country twice and through Canada once. I have traveled over 350 miles by motorcycle and I average about 14 to 20,000 miles a day, excuse me, a, a year. The appeal of riding a motorcycle is of course wind therapy. What do I mean by wind therapy? When you are on a motorcycle, the wind is in your face and everything, I mean everything, is behind you. <sighs> Moving on, since being a teenager, I've always engaged in very physical athletic pursuits. You can tell that by looking at me. I have a passion about fitness and my unusual workout routines reflect that. I have several videos of my workouts that have been put up on YouTube. About four months ago, I started to collect all of those videos into a single channel. One video in particular is receiving special attention, and you may have overheard the conversation that started this talk. Apparently, I am the oldest person in the entire YouTube site to execute a round off back handspring. Before me, the oldest person was 60. I am 63. It's a long time. My <laughs> My life is now pointed in a different direction, which includes more public speaking. So I've been threatening myself for several years to join Toastmasters. <laughs> GrowthWorks is the name of my new endeavor. This is just getting underway, so please don't rush to the website. It's still under construction. GrowthWorks is essentially an umbrella which provides information, tools, speakers, all targeted at challenging the status quo of how we regard the boomer generation. The basis for this effort is an unusual demographic event in our society over, that will happen over the next 10 to 30 years. This will be the very first time in human history that people over 60 will outnumber people under 20. This has never happened before. The significance of this is immense. GrowthWorks is being put in place to educate, inspire, and advocate boomer generation. Growth Works is a fruition of a promise I made while lying in a hospital room 10 years ago. I appreciate your attention and interest in my snippets of my life, but if you'll excuse me, I apparently have a phone call that I have to return. I thank you all for listening. Hi, I'm Kyle Kelson and we're here with Lee Moat and Scott Green and today we're going to be talking about Lee's speech. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to ask a few questions to Lee about Toastmasters in general and how you got involved in our club. Well, uh, I, as you may have heard from the clip, I had been looking for improvement, improving myself for quite a while because I was pointing my life in a different direction and I know that included more public speaking. Mm -hmm. So I had been threatening myself with Toastmasters, which is the same <laughs> phrase I used for in the speech. And I finally committed to that, mm. to committed to my own improvements, com committed to my own betterment. So, mm. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you joined our club, and you've definitely been an asset since you've been I've on been board. enjoying the hell out of it. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's, let's jump into a little bit about the content of the speech itself. And obviously, we want to hear from you. And then Scott's going to go ahead and talk about it, because he had a chance to evaluate your speech as well. And we'll get some feedback and dialogue on that. OK. So. The speech was basically, this is the icebreaker speech for Toastmasters, mm -hmm. where you introduce yourself to the club. Uh, I tend to be um, a sort of strange character, and I didn't want to give too much of myself. But I end up, when I saw the video, I end up giving a lot of my speech in it. I. Uh, the, the writing of the speech was sort of personal to me, and I shared a lot of personal situations in there. Uh, I enjoyed how I opened up with the mm. telephone conversation. Yes. Uh, that felt that was great. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Yeah. That, that felt unique to me. But uh, in watching the video, I know that there are many, for example, I'm tied to my notes too much. Mm. I can see that. And so 
I've just appreciated everything that I've been able to learn about myself, about my speaking, sure. through the experiences that I've had with Toastmasters so far. So, but it was an experience watching me on, in that clip. Absolutely. The other thing that's interesting for the folks who are watching as well is we had our Hawaiian shirt day that day. <laughs> oh, so yes. That made it a little bit different. Uh, we, we don't always wear Hawaiian shirts and lays at the meeting, so if you come and you don't see us in that attire, don't be upset. So. I was somewhat embarrassed to be so exposed. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for a 63-year-old man, you've got the guns to go with the shirt. Thank you so, so that's much. the good news, right? <laughs> Thank so. you. So, Scott, uh, tell me about your initial thoughts about Lee's speech. Uh, one of the great pleasures of going to Toastmasters is hearing people come out of their shell, give their icebreaker speech, introduce themselves to the audience. What you did is you not only introduce yourself to the club, but you had a portion in there where you really inspired us. Mm. Going through the motorcycle accident, going through the coma, the realization that, man, I may not walk. And just coming to this epiphany, like I really wanna do something valuable with my life. And then you throw uh, these statistics about the people over 60 outnumbering the people under 20. Mm. And how you really have some cause that you're working for that you wanna bring an enlightenment to those older people and the young people and all the opportunities that exist within that paradigm is just amazing and I applaud you for being 63 years old and being the oldest man on YouTube to do gymnastics. I can't even do a push-up. I don't think I can. <laughs> train up, but that's great that you you really have taken that event in your life and it's been a catalyst for inspiration not only to yourself but to others too and I think that's one thing I love about Toastmasters and the people that come there. They're looking to better themselves. Absolutely. And it's so inspiring to see people like you and other people come and give those type of speeches. I'm not unique in being driven by a purpose. The mm. speeches I've heard since joining Toastmasters have truly inspired me. Mm. So I'm going to agree with you 100%. It's not just my speech, but I'm hearing speeches from everybody that lift me up inside. So. Right. I would say that Toastmasters is more than just getting up there and learning to be comfortable speaking in front of people. But I would, wouldn't you agree that we all learn so much in the meetings Absolutely. from everybody who's in it? Absolutely, no, from serving in the various roles that we play during the club meetings and things of that sort, and in giving our own speak speeches. Finding our voice is what it's all about. You said the other day, Scott, communication is what it's about. The better I can communicate, the better everyone communicates, the better the world is going to be. All right. Oh, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Now, now, Lee, one question I had for you is, um, obviously, the telephone intro was a good one. <laughs> Did you <laughs> wrestle funny. at all with doing a, a back handspring as the intro? Or I, that, uh, normally, the I normally put on demonstrations and shows of small, on a small scale. I was sort of debating if I should start off with a handstand, which mm. has been my trademark move. Sure. But I eliminated that from <laughs> my consideration and just decided to be a normal person and start off with a phone conversation. Absolutely. No, because we have had, one, Scott remembers this, we yeah. had one of our members, uh, she was involved in yoga and so she actually started off the meeting in what I guess is called an inversion. Yes. Where she's basically in a headstand. Yes. And so she started off her speech in that fashion quietly. And so we all sort of wondered really what was going on there. And it was sort of a, a thing. Oh, you so stole to see my you, thunder. That was going to be a, a, a plan of mine. There's still, a, there's still an opportunity to do that. Yes. So because the, the, the membership's growing and there's a lot of new people in the club who didn't probably see that speech. But that was tremendous. And I think the, the other thing that Scott alluded to I thought was great is when you made the connection between your age and then where the age of the country's going. That's right. What do you attribute that to? What, what, what do you think the seminal things that have been done that, that have us in this funny place where we now have more, more people over 60 than we do under This 20? is a very unique demographic position that we will be in. The, the baby boomers have moved throughout the decades and have left their mark on every decade. Mm -hmm. The baby boomers are now moving into what may be considered the final stage, and we will leave our mark there too. Mm. The media has portrayed the aging population in a manner that seems to give us a sense of a threatened future with mm. Medicare, medic um, the medical concerns, mm. the social security concerns. Sure. But on top of all that, which are true concerns, I am seeing a magnificent opportunity for so much. 
mm. so much rejuvenation coming from these changing demographics. The, uh, yeah, I can name some funny things that we'll have an opportunity to re-explore, but the baby boomers have never accepted the status quo. Mm. And as we all age and get into our older years, we will find new strength and opportunity. This aging thing that we are doing is not lost youth. And I try to demonstrate this in my life and in my business. Um, I, although I may have started exercising for that YouTube video thinking that other 63-year-olds should be able to do this, I <laughs> finished it knowing that other 63-year-olds, and probably including this one, should not. <laughs> <laughs> so, but still, the capability that resides in this older generation is just immense. Sure. And I've, that's been my purpose. Mm. Yeah, not just because mm. I am in that age, but I am seeing so, much, so many miracles, so many records being broken, so much that's coming from this group of, of our population that it's inspired me to be more than what I am. Mm. So that's basically what I've devoted my time to. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. The other thing that struck me about this story is that you ha also had the situation where your wife was really forced to make some key decisions for you. Absolutely. And fortunately for you, she made the, the best one possible. The accident was befuddling the doctors. They, they advised my wife that my leg needed to be amputated, that I would never use it properly again. My wife insisted, you do not know this man. Do not cut off that leg. Mm -hmm. We need to cut off the leg. He will not use it again. Mm -hmm. You do not know this man. Do not cut off his leg. Mm -hmm. They did the best they could. Um, I still am compromised on the leg, but not many people know the pain I feel almost every day. Mm -hmm. But as I said in my speech, pain is one thing. Suffering is a total different thing. What do you mean by that? Could you clarify well, that a little bit for us? The pain is not an option. Being born is painful, right. dying is painful, but how much suffering we do in that acceptance of the pain, the pain I feel is part of my normal day. Mm -hmm. Do I reject my normal day? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I welcome my normal day, including the pain that comes with it. So there's no suffering with the pain, there's an acknowledgement that there's pain in my leg. No suffering, just acknowledgement. Exactly, no, I love the way you frame that. Thank you for clearing that up. So One of the questions I have for you is, since you've joined Toastmasters, do you ever see a point in your life where Toastmasters will take you to where you've been or where you need to go and you will have no need for Toastmasters anymore? Again, that's, that sounds like a strange question. How can you not have need for that which has grown you? Mm -hmm. You know, you, at the very least you can do is become a wise old man and turn around and teach. Right. <laughs> and so, um, which is, again, another strength of the older <clears throat> generation. We are strong conduits to the past. We carry a lot of wisdom and experience that younger people do not. So Toastmasters is not something I can leave behind when it has given me or will be giving me as much as I'm anticipating it giving me. Right. I've seen my improvement already. I agree with you. I've only been in Toastmasters nearly two years now, but I was just talking to my wife and I can never see myself outside of Toastmasters. I think I will always have a meeting to go to at least once a month for Toastmasters <laughs> because there's so much giving and getting. Exactly. At the giving and getting, you, you said it. You can't live life with catcher's mitts. You have to throw back. Right. And the giving is part of what this whole thing is about. The getting, you will get. But the more you give, the more you get. And that's, that's the goal, to contribute and to be contributed to. That mix is what makes life go around. No, absolutely. And so would you say that it was the epiphany, the experience that you had that brought you to the sense of service? Or do you think that it's something that your generation always had? And maybe Scott, even though Scott and I are trying to chase you down, <laughs> we're not going to catch you. Um, the, I believe that the maturity of the human being leads them in this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, this has been true from time eternal, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that as we get older, we start to focus our attention to broader spheres. Externally. And sure. we start to volunteer more. One sense. of the things that we will see from the older generation is getting into society, volunteering, 
social entrepreneurship, social change. This is part of who we all become. We start to look outside of ourselves, um, outside of our own myopic spheres to see what else is going on, what else we can do, and try to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. If you would have had the opportunity to get in Toastmasters 30 years ago, would you have done it? I don't think so. Um, I was too full of myself. <laughs> I was too arrogant. Yeah, you have kids. You know how they are. Right. <laughs> um, when I was 30, I was too much into other things. Uh, it just wasn't in the cards. Right. But I watched myself change. I watched myself learn. I watched myself. I'm going to say it, grow wiser, mm -hmm. and just understanding the life around me a little bit better than I did when I was 30 has made an impact, and I'm here to learn. Yep. I'm here to learn. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. I just had a conversation with a uh, recent college graduate today, and he's asking me, what are some things that I can do now that I'm done with college to help make me a better person? And the first thing I thought of was like, you need to join Toastmasters. Sure. And it's Absolutely. something I wish Absolutely. I would have done out of college. Mm. You know, I waited until I was 45 years old to join Toastmasters. Mm. And I'm thinking, my kids, this is a great thing for them. And they're only 15, 13 years old. But they see the growth in my wife and myself and the people who we associate with. Mm. And I think as soon as they turn 18, they're going to be join in the first club. Well, you're their parents, so. Absolutely. <laughs> I, to, to, the answer, to add to the answer I just gave, you asked if I would have joined Toastmasters at 30 years old or so. I answered no, but at my age, I should have. Yeah. I, I need to emphasize that, that I, should, I would have benefited so much had I, but better late than ever. What's your favorite role at Toastmasters outside of speaking? Oh. Uh, I enjoy being Table Topics Master. <laughs> I enjoy, um, although I haven't done it yet, I enjoy um, being, I think I will enjoy very much being Quiz Master. But the Table Topics Master, I fell in love with Table Topics as soon as I joined Toastmasters. Because to speak off the cuff like that, to be able to speak extemporarily is a wonderful quality. Mm -hmm. Something that I don't feel that I'm strong in and would like to get better at. To, to so. clarify for folks, just so people might be wondering what we're talking about with regard Good to table idea. topics, it's basically a time during our meeting where we have impromptu speeches. And so someone who's a table topics master will ask questions. They can either be frivolous or they can be weighty. And they'll be asked of various people in the room, either members or in some cases volunteer guests, and they'll get a chance to share. So as a table topics master, you can sort of drive the direction of that, and it can be a lot of fun and be very rewarding as well. And Kyle Weir found a real benefit to that in real life is interviewing. Absolutely. When you go to interview for Absolutely. new positions, table topics really primes you for being good to think on your feet. Yeah, thinking on your feet. Yeah. So many times I've walked away from a conversation saying, oh, I should have said this, or I should have said, oh, why did I say that? <laughs> yeah. And the table topics, I fell in love with table topics as soon as I joined Toastmasters. Absolutely. So that was, I, I like speaking too, because I will grow there too, but table topics is where that, that pulled me in. Excellent, excellent. I think going back to Lee's speech, um, your speech was so motivational, and I've seen you recently give speeches, and I've seen an incredible amount of growth in just a few speeches. And I, I'm just so proud to have you in my club and share the, the limelight with you at times. I'm and happy to be there. I learned so much from you, and I have to say, honestly, it's a pleasure to be in your company. Thank you so much. Looking at that speech, I can see some of the improvements you might be referring to. I feel, when I look at that speech, I feel like I was so tied to my notes. And that's one of the things that I have to improve in. It's been making some progress but it needs to make more. You know, the speech itself was written yeah, and delivered with notes in front of me. I would, my next few speeches, I'm trying to abandon notes altogether. Right. That can and be the, one of the biggest challenges for all it, of us, really. Yeah. It certainly is. It's just how I handle my mind. Once I start m making notes, I seem to be tied to them. But I will conquer that. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> no and, doubt. And that's that. one of the misnomers, too, is that the, the, their effective use of notes. I mean, if you think about all the famous people that you see speaking, almost all of them are using teleprompters That's or right. things like that. So this, this idea that we have to totally abandon notes is, is maybe one that most people have. 
that mm -hmm. that's probably helpful as a goal, but may not always be as necessary. That's right. That's right. The real key is to be able to use it as though people don't even know that you have notes, and that's really, you know, when you've reached that point. Yes. Now, yes. now it doesn't look like a crutch. It looks like just a tool that you're using. If you're a carpenter, you're using a hammer. If you're if you're a exactly. speaker, you're you're using some sort of notes or a teleprompter if you have to. Right. So, but in that speech, I just felt much more connected to my notes than I felt was appropriate. So I've already labeled that as an area that I need to improve. Excellent. I can see improvement, but still. Well, we're excited for the future. As Scott said, we're both really glad to have you as part of the club. It's been great to see your development, and we're looking forward to the future. I certainly am, too. I'm excited to get there. All right, great. Thank well, you thank much. you for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Next, we're going to watch a video about how to give a toast, because that's something most people don't always understand how to do. You're asked at a wedding to do those kind of things. So enjoy this video from the home office, and we'll be back to close the show. Hello, I'm Cheyenne. Have you ever been asked to give a toast, but you didn't know what to say? Thanks for visiting Toastmasters International to learn how to prepare and present the ideal toast. Since 1924, we've helped more than four million people gain the confidence to communicate in all situations. Now here are three time-tested tips to help you prepare so that you feel empowered to speak at any special occasion. It's a special occasion and friends are gathered to celebrate. Some of these occasions are more formal than others, but even a formal occasion doesn't have to be intimidating. The first tip will help you succeed with any toast. One skill that Toastmasters learn is how to get to the point. With a toast, this is especially important. You want to stand up, raise your glass, and say a few words to make everyone smile, but be brief and then be done. Since you're keeping it to a brief few minutes, what should you talk about? That might depend on the situation. For a eulogy, it's a good idea to focus on celebrating the positive and most important parts of that person's life. Highlight a few remarkable things that he or she accomplished, but make it a short list. Platitudes, cliches, or long chronologies will not only bore your listeners, they will steal the impact of your message. Instead, try to express what gave that person joy and a sense of accomplishment. For a wedding, speak from the heart and wish that couple well. You might mention one aspect of the relationship that you admire, but be sure it's appropriate. For a wedding toast, avoid potentially embarrassing anecdotes. Risque jokes or anecdotes as a part of a toast for any celebration is hazardous. You're better off if you keep the focus on the person or the event being honored and not on embarrassing stories or bad language. To offer the best toast possible, try to practice it once or twice before the big event. Rehearse the words you'd like to say, but also plan an opening. To begin, stand up, raise your glass and say, I'd like to propose a toast. Then practice giving your fellow celebrants time to raise their glasses before you speak. Also, you may not have access to a microphone, so if you'll be addressing a large gathering, it's a good idea to practice projecting your voice. Don't yell, but breathe deeply and let your voice radiate from your center. Practice will help. With a little preparation and practice, you can master the art of toasting and help make every celebration an event to remember. Cheers. For more information on toasting, please visit a Toastmasters Club. Find a location near you at toastmasters.org. All right, again, I'm Kyle Kelson, and hopefully you enjoyed today's show. Hopefully you're inspired by Lee and his ability to do backflips at age 63. And Scott, as he described again, the great reasons why you might want to be involved in a Toastmasters Club. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much. This is Toastmasters.